right, it's time for our tech tutorial. Dima Clati is here from What's New to take us uh, through his view that there's been a resurgence of rogue antivirus systems. What is that? I have no idea. What is that? <laughs> well, real and truly, it's not my view, but it's what I've been seeing over the last couple of days. I've right. had at least, yesterday alone, I had maybe five persons come in with rogue anti spyware. Now, what is the rogue anti spyware? There is what we call rogue antivirus alerts, also known as rogueware or scareware. And the reason why we call it scareware is that usually a lot of them, what they do is... They try and frighten you into taking on something. Exactly. You'll turn on your machine and you see this pop-up that says, oh, we have just detected that you have... 700 viruses. Right. Click here now to remove them. Right. And if you click on it, it does usually take you to a website and it says, oh, you just need to pay 19.95. that's right. all. But here's the trick. That's, that, that website itself mm -hmm. is only there to borrow like your credit card numbers and stuff like those. Really? So, yeah. So what they'll do, they'll send it to a, to a website, but while you're putting in your credit card information, they're actually retrieving that information and storing it. Why am I not, not seeing? Why, why isn't this stuff coming up on the screen? Screen. All right. There. No? No. All right. There. All right. So what is the rogue security until Basically, the rogue security software, also known as scareware mm -hmm. or rogue antivirus or rogueware, as I said, is a software that appears to be beneficial from a security perspective. So it says, okay, I'm an antivirus. Put me on your machine, I'll protect you from everything. In essence, what it is, is a Trick. Trojan. Right. right. It's behaving pathologically mendacious. Ooh, it's lying to you. It should really pack up its bags and, and go. go. Exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> so <laughs> it generates erroneous or misleading alerts or attempts to lure users into participating in fraudulent transactions, which is when they send it to a website to use a credit card so they can take a credit card information. Right. Now, um, the next question you'd ask yourself is, how do I? How does it get on my computer? Uh -huh. And this is the tricky thing. First things, first thing you need to remember that the persons who are writing this software, they are very brilliant people. And they will just sit down, spend unlimited amount of hours just figuring out how to con you. Right. Now, the one thing that most humans have in common, unlike Simon, who here right. just likes to shell out money and purchase stuff, yeah. people like free things. Ah. Right? But because Simon is somebody who likes to spend his money, he's never going to go and download a free antivirus or nope. a free... Nope. Because there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> so what they do is they, they create legitimate looking pop-ups. Right. That advertise security updates or, um, or updates to your existing software and say, okay, click here. And once you do that, then what it does? It say. The window pop up and it says updates and alerts and it takes you to some website to download the software. Once you download it and it's on your machine, then that's the end of it. Hmm. Not the machine. It's just that now, now you're actually infected with the software. And to get it off, believe me, it's not as easy as it sounds. Yeah, it didn't sound easy to begin mm -hmm. with, to be honest. Okay. And All right, but then, uh, because the problem is people want free. protection. True. How do they get the proper protection without ending up on some rogue site? It's simple. Do what you do. Pay for it. Exactly. But then I'm paying for it and I'm taking away my, my details. What details? When they send me to that no, site. No, but you see, that is the thing. What you're supposed to be doing is purchasing reputable. Remember, you know. But how do I know? Because I might type in, uh, no, I, might, I might Yahoo, for instance, and say, um, antivirus True, software. But first things first, really and truly, you shouldn't be on the internet unless you already have an antivirus software running on your machine. Gotcha. That's the first thing. Now, if you have only an antivirus software running on your machine, you need to also move up to... Um, get the anti-spyware. So bottom line is, rather than buying it online, machine, should I go into what's new and buy the software from a, an individual rather than go on the net and download some thief in rubbish? Oh. Both options are equally viable. If you have credit card, and because for example, if you already came into the store and purchased one, what you can do is renew your subscription online. Right. However, what you need to ensure, and again, renew your subscription before it has expired. So that's because something else that people so that do. They wait shot. until it expires, when which point, during that period, you have no protection, protection. from new viruses right. or new elements. Because these guys are always trying to beat the existing... It's okay. They sit down and if they find out that the antivirus company comes up with something that fixes it today, they sit down and say, okay, this is what they did, what are we going to do? Countermeasure. Mm. It's like politics, opposition, and government. Right. All right. If we could um, get this back on the screen. Um, okay, when it comes on your machine, what does it do? A whole host of things. It reports, first of all, it reports that you have all these viruses. Right. You don't have it. 
and then after that it will probably say okay go to this site right go to the site purchase using a credit card it takes the credit card information it also steals your personal information a lot of persons have been locked out of your email addresses and then what they use this for is ingenious they take your email address and they send out a message to say oh I know of a particular doctor which it happened to Oh, he has fallen on hard times. Right. He just needs some assistance. And persons were sending ten thousand US dollars yeah. to the account, which or they, they send you one that I'm stuck in a hotel in yes, so and so, and I do have right. a more signage. Right. So you need to be on the dark. Very careful. Right. 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 And then it installs what you call keyloggers. Right. And what this does, it's a little software that runs on an each machine. You won't even notice it's there. But every keystroke that you press on the keyboard, it can email it to somebody somewhere else. Uh -huh. And when it does that, if, if you are doing other things on the machine, uh -huh. it has a list of all your passwords now right. and everything that you do. So it slow you down, corrupt up your files. It will even disable your updates and also stop you from launching applications. That's a shocker. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> how do I stop it now, Bridget? Okay. Well, the first thing you need to do is, oh, before we go there, persons might be familiar with some of these you right, they would have right, seen so right. if you were infected you know what this looks like antivirus xp 2008 is one of the popular ones there's also this is one of the newer ones which is which has come out and it have the windows brand and yeah, yeah, everything exactly so it, it, it pretends like it's the original real right. deal and then it's very difficult to get out because what it does it integrates itself with windows hmm. now if you notice the last three screens uh -huh. even though the name of the thing is different windows background protector right. it's all the same screen so it, this is just one virus so they change something today what it does is manipulate itself come back with a different name all right so how i protect myself Bridget? install a firewall and keep it turned on what is the firewall well that in windows your... windows come built in right but a lot of the antiviruses also come with a firewall what it does basically keeps a track of everything every information that is coming in from the internet and what you're sending out as well uh -huh. that is important two you need to up update your Operating system. Right. A lot of times when you do updates, what it does, it takes in um, security updates, which plugs loopholes which the viruses can manipulate. Right. You also need to do install an antivirus and an anti spyware software and keep them updated. Case on point, if you have antivirus but you don't connect to the update to the internet to update them, then they're kind of no use because you're not pro being protected from the new the latest, stuff that are coming the latest out. stuff. Right. Um, you should also be very careful when you're clicking on links that comes in emails and on social sites. I know we have this habit and I've seen it pro proliferating on BB. They're sending all these links right, and right. persons just keep clicking on them. You need to be very careful. I don't do those. <laughs> you can send me a link to your stupid and not going on it. <laughs> okay, another thing that you can do in Windows, Windows has different kind of accounts that you can use on machine. You have a restricted account, so there's a standard account and administrator account. Administrator account has entire privilege on the machine. You can do anything. Whereas a standard user account, it gives you a basic set of um, privileges, but then if you want to do certain feet, certain things, it asks you for an elevated um, level, which you have to put in, like the password for the administrator account. This pre prevents the viruses from getting into your account and then proliferating and doing all these stuff using that elevated account. Okay. Phishing scams. For example, like the email where they say, oh, I am in. Right, right. right. So those you need to be aware of. Um, well, not only that, you're sorry in a bridge, but if you're overseas <laughs> and you're locked with you tell you, and you're not giving the money for me. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Some person just have um, antivirus running a machine. If, you, if that is what you have, you also need to get an anti spyware program. So it's why they don't incorporate it into an antivirus? Usually, you have those where it says antivirus plus anti spyware, but you have persons who have standalone anti spyware okay. programs or standalone antivirus programs, which they run. Um, we'll move on to a list of recommended. Um, antivirus software that I would use. Uh -huh. Bitdefender is always at the top of my list. Kaspersky is second. <coughs> yeah, not to be sneezed at. Norton, Norton is always in there. That's probably the oldest one. And ESET Nod32. Most people probably wouldn't have heard of it, but it's actually pretty good. Uh -huh. We'll move on to the spyware that I'd also recommend. Malware Antibytes is the one I use the most. It is actually very good. Um, Spy Sweeper, right. Counter Spy, Stopzilla. And I just thought the name was funny. Yeah. Spyware Doctor. Yeah. No. So you don't have any system that I can send back into their system to blow up their <laughs> computer? Again, that would be a discussion for off the air. 
You know, and that's what really what we need to create. <laughs> when you recognize the spyware, you click a button and it go right back down and shock the brother who send it to you and it go drop down dead. Boop. <laughs> um, where you can purchase it, of course, you know, where to find what's new. We're right. in Ligani, Tropical Plaza, Ocherius, Montego Bay. We have two locations. Right. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can just hit me up. Twitter, email, Facebook, and I started a BB group. You keep my youth, you really get up to date with the technology. All right. You have to use it. Right. Thanks, Dean. That makes sense. Because I'm afraid of the spyware and whatnot. No, really, like I mean, per, usually you're out at least a day or two if your machine gets infected. Right. All right. That's our tech tutorial for this week. We'll be back next week uh, with more from our technical officer from What's New. All right. We are going to head over to Simone, who is finding out about decaf. Actually, some people have a spot of tea. This morning we're having a spot of coffee. The launch of uh, Jamaica Blue Mountain Decaf is historical. It's happening this morning, the first time in our history that we have had a commercial shipment of Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee certified by the Coffee Industry Board as Jamaica Blue Mountain Decaf. Senator Norman Grant is here. He's very excited this morning. CEO of the Mavis Bank Coffee Factory. Congratulations. F thank you. You're launching Simone. today. I'm Simon. And, and you call Yours. You yes. call this a game changer. Yes. Tell me why you say Indeed, that. Indeed, it is a game changer because um, Jablom and Mavis Bank Coffee Factory have been in business for over um, eight years. Um, we buy coffee from 6,000 coffee farmers. There is a recession going on right now. And you recall that last, last, last year sometime, um, there was just nobody to buy the coffee from the farmers. We have been very consistent at Mavis Bank. We have bought 100,000 boxes that represent 47% of the industry. We are roasting about 400,000 pounds of coffee, wow. which, I, which we are the largest roaster um, in Jamaica. We are the largest processing Blue Mountain operation in Jamaica. And we have to find innovative ways of doing it. We see a huge captive audience for decaffeinated.